The culture change at Vandy is starting to take effect. It's part two. You are Locked On Vandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. Thank you for making Locked On Vandy your first listen each and every day. Thank you. Shout out to the everydayers. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now, free on the App Store or Google Play. So we continue with part two with Kurt Page as we discuss transfer portal, culture, defense, all of the things surrounding a vastly improving Vandy football program, the culture change, the overhaul, you're starting to see it unfold a little bit. So enjoy. I mean, yeah, you can look at their stats and be very discouraged. Like you can, you could start, let's just say hypothetically, I did this with a basketball recruit. Like I talked about him as soon as he hit the portal, I was like, Vandy should call this guy. And then next thing you know, he commits on Sunday. So nice. That was, uh, <laughs> that was, I was like, so good. Yeah. Locked on Vandy, baby. <laughs> so I talked about Jacob Bostic and I'm thinking they're going to sign him now because, because of what just happened with the, the basketball guy, De- uh, Devin McLaughlin. But um, so people are going to see, especially if he signs, this is going to be hilarious. People are going to see that. He's coming from the most historically abysmal offense ever created, known the man <laughs> in Iowa, that is allergic to wide receivers, mm. allergic to first downs. It's basically just how fast can we get our punt team out there is, is basically their philosophy. Um, and they're gonna people are gonna see that and to see that he didn't really record any stats right. in that offense, and they're gonna say, What? Like mm. this is what we've become, but if you dig deeper, you look at the wide receiver room that we currently have. You got guys. You got Dylan. You got Skinner. You got Cheryl. You you know, you, you got Foundy. I think that's how you say his name. Um, this guy's coming in to play a very specific role, and then anything else is house money, mm-hmm. right? Right. Foundy's- well- playing a very specific role. I think the dog in this wide receiver room is going to be Quincy Skinner. Okay. He's going to be the dog. Yeah. Like he, he he wins contested catches. He's tough. He'll block. He, you know, he kind of does a little bit of everything. Well, I think, I think that's, it's so refreshing because I listened to Alabama and I listened, you know, being down here in the South and I listened to Auburn. And they talk about QB1, QB2, and it's so so refreshing that Vandy is now in that talk, you know? Mm-hmm. Same thing with receiver. Vandy gets – now, the, the difference in Alabama and Auburn and the way, the way we got to get our team together, we're a lot like Indiana. I was watching a good show the other night and talked about they had a number of James Madison transfers, but they also took – people from other programs, either programs that were successful or if it was a lower FCS or wherever, Division Two, Division Three, NAI, if they had, like, incredible numbers. So Iowa has been successful. They're Big Ten, you know, top one of the top teams there with no offense. This guy came in there with a pedigree to help the offense as a receiver. Mm-hmm. And so now it's, you know, he saw the writing on the wall, you know, he's not going to get an opportunity. They're not going to get first downs. Now, now they're making a change. I don't know what they they've gone to. They, I don't, I don't know what they've they, gone to. Or whatever, whatever they've gone to has got to be better. Oh yeah. 100%. I mean, it can only be better. <laughs> right. It can't get any worse. No, but it, it's, it's a, it's a thing where these players and that's, that's the cool thing is you see them catching rhythm. Like you see, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's going to be a good player. 
you know, now you, 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 you collaborate with resources that you have and tell us that, you know, that's what we need to hear. You know, what, what's strange is like, why are we signing? Why are we doing this? We run this or what, you know, we're not even, we're not even, we didn't even entertain that. Right. I mean, that's good. That's good. Now in the past few years, it's been like hodgepodge, whatever, you know, just, I don't know. If, I don't know if it just got, if it just got off the tracks or never got up on the tracks. Maybe. I just maybe think now the guy was overwhelmed. The tracks, I know? think the guy was overwhelmed. I, 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 I think he had a whole bunch of things and didn't know what to do with them. Yeah. Like well, I, I think he, I think he wanted to be a cookie cutter type offense, and just he, he had three extremely explosive dynamic receivers that were all good at something, and then he never really focused on what they were good at. He yeah. never schemed them into yeah. favorable situations. So a lot of times playing to your players' strengths. You know, Scheme you got them London up. Humphreys I mean, running deep and yeah. Will Shepard running short, and you're like, well, it, that should be that should be reversed. Like yeah. offensive yes. London Humphreys, but like he, he, he's more suited for that. Yeah. If you want a big play, you go Will Shepard over the top. Yeah. Or on the post or or whatever. Or exactly. you know deep digs and stuff, and and McGowan, M- McGowan is that he was that dog, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, that Quincy Skinner is going to be, but like they didn't know how to use him last year. That's Could right. you imagine those three? And that like if they had just waited oh. a oh. month, they would be really happy here. Yeah. Well, they, they, they just didn't. I mean, who knew? You know, who knew? Well, I don't blame them. I really don't blame them. Um, given the current situation, like they didn't, they didn't know. You know, two and ten. You had a really bad coordinator that was overwhelmed, and he had just gotten fired, and you hadn't really made headway on on hiring a replacement, and they had to act fast to get the yeah. portal. I don't blame him one bit. I probably would have done the same thing, but it just, you know. And you got to look at your quarterback. I mean, the year before they had Mike they had Wright, nothing. and then last year they went with two other guys and. You know, AJ Swan, he was injured better part of the time. The other kid just, he just, just, he just did never, yeah, he never, he never wants to release the ball. He just wants to take care of everything and throw a little short, you know, and hand off. And, you know, and like you said, I mean, it's just, but it's, uh, it's exciting now. They got, they got a quarterback room, they got competition, they got, they got competition. people talking about it, and they got, they, they, they have a plan. They know this is what we're going to run. This is going to be our bread and butter. Uh, this is where we got to get better. This is where we can use his skill set. And uh, I think that's the beauty of what you're bringing, you know, when you're talking about things. And people need to realize that because so many, uh, so so many people get informed, but they just get they don't get the go- they don't get down there deep. They just get the Google version. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a cute. He's a he's a He's a third, you know, he's a wide receiver three, you know, so, you know, that's it, you know. Well, I mean, you're giving them, it's you're giving them all the details. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's, it's a piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Um, and the secret weapon, and this is, this is a, this is twofold here. Secret weapon is Jerry Kill because yeah. he is a head coach. He's overseeing the offense because he's an <laughs> offensive guy. And that allows Clark Lee to do what? Call defense, be the defensive coordinator and the head coach. So you got two head coaches, one's behind the scenes and helping the offense. And then you got Clark Lee, who's the actual head coach and running the defense. So, like with Jerry Kill and Tim Beck running the show, Clark Lee can almost not, um, not completely ignore him because he's the head coach and he can't completely ignore him. But theoretically, if he wanted to, he could. Yeah. He's not going to, but. Theoretically, if he could, he wanted to. He could if he wanted to. But he's got that defense freaking humming, dude. Like you read, like it's exciting what 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 they've got going on on that side of the ball. The the kid from Purdue, the newcomer, yeah. uh, Corday Sindor, is going to be an absolute animal, and he's an energy guy. The uh, I'll tell you who's the big who's been the biggest energy guy, the biggest like boost, the biggest juice guy is uh, the six four corner from Wyoming. Wow. Okay. Potential, right? Because yeah. he's six four. He's physically imposing. Yeah. You you watch him. He's still you know, like I I would love for him to get better at his transitions from back pedal to from pedal to 
um, to run, but uh, his hip turns and stuff, he's just so long. It's just tough for those taller guys to do that. You know, yeah. that's just a tough physical movement. Um, but he, but like, you can't help, but like you look over there and you see some big six, four animal over there, just talking, just talking trash and you can't help but be afraid of him. You're just like looking at him like, Oh crap. I can't. Well, he, reminds, he sounds like a, and Leonard Coleman was a four, three guy, but he sounds long. Like he was I was born to beach Florida and played with the Indianapolis coach for a number of years when we were at Vanderbilt. So, you know, and you put that guy and you just, you know, let him take up a long, a lot of space, you know, he's long and, and uh, let him make, let him go after that ball and, Try to be the rapture, you know, the condor, and try to try to swat swat at things and harass the receivers, and you know, uh, use his length to his advantage, you know. And that's the beauty that 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 we see that uh, they want to do. So it's exciting, man. Yeah. It really He's is. Kid coming in, in the summer, he was uh, all conference uh, at the FCS level in the Big Sky out there in Eastern Washington. Um, coming in, Marlon Jones, like. He's supposed to be the better one of the two, but I'm not so Good. sure at this point that Colby Taylor is not right there with him. And then the the freshman kid from uh, from San Antonio is going to be – he's going to be – the I, before the season's over, he's going to be starting free safety. Okay. I, I, I'm calling it now. He's going to be the starting yeah. free safety. This episode is presented by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience – the formula for winning champions championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you will always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all of the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible, item, eligible, eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Are you tired? Welcome back. Are you tired of all of that screaming that happens when you're watching ESPN and Fox sports. Do you have to, if you're tired of all that, you need to make the switch to locked on sports today. It's a free 24 seven sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming locked on sports today brings you can't miss analysis opinions and news streaming 24 seven on YouTube or free or the free Amazon fire TV channels app, part of the locked on podcast network, your team, Every day. Uh, and then that gives you freedom to have Randon Fontenet and CJ Taylor down towards the box. So you could play like a single high look uh, with those two guys, like CJ Taylor's, you're kind of your big, or either one of them could really work in this role. But like I think CJ Taylor's a little bit bigger, but CJ Taylor could play like really down close to the line of scrimmage and Fontenet and kind of play that in between um, to the field side. And CJ Taylor could play that boundary, that low boundary side. And then you have, uh, yeah, Fontenet kind of play that intermediate thing, so he can right. dive back to the to the deep half, or he can he can come up on the run, and then you have Dante Carter sitting sitting center field over the ball on the hash, and 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 doing it. So you either cover one, you can disguise cover four. I mean, you can do a lot of different things because of the skill sets of the guys that you have in the right. back end. Um, now your defensive front is going to be a little tricky. You're going to have to get a little creative and crafty in how you get after the quarterback and create pressure and stop the run. Like there's no superstars really down there. Kane, uh, not Kane Patterson, but Langston Patterson um, at linebacker, Prince Colley, you know, some of those guys are like, I, I think can perform, but like you just don't really quite know how that all is going to shake out. So the back end is going to have to support the front end. Right. As the front end develops. Well, I think that's just part of the, Part of the growing and the developing. I mean, you know, it's it's like you said earlier, it's getting like NFL junior. I mean, basically every year you go into an NFL team, you hear there's they they gotta replace something, you know? Mm -hmm. It's either the, the front 
the fronts or the linebacker core, two or three guys, you know, we got or the back end or they never have everything fixed up, you know. And so that's kind of where we're at. Uh, maybe Georgia has kind of everything fixed up. Alabama, you know, there's, I don't know, what, 10, 15 that pretty well got everything locked up. Mm-hmm. So we're not we're not uh, we're not in the uh, minority on this. So we need to be continue to be aggressive, continue to go after what is the best fit for us in personnel, emotion, strategy, strategic, you know, tactical, everything like you've described it. So I think that's going to be the beauty of, and I think Clark Lee. I just hope I'm I'm, I'm so happy so happy for him that he has surrounded himself and he is now given and leading with vision. And I think that's important. And, and maybe he was doing this before Corey, but it wasn't, it, was. wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't as apparent as it is now. It's like, he's just put it, he's put it out on the strip. We're going to go down this road. We're going to yeah. be the best in West end. You turn here on Natchez and you're going to be this, you know, and, and that's exciting. And, you know, as a football coach and a football player, as a football fan, we like teams that have – that are mission-driven, mm-hmm. not just uh, – and he's talked about some things, but I think, I think that, you know, he's getting to the roots. I mean, at the end of the day, we want to block and tackle. Yeah. That's it. And whoever can do that the best, and, and at the end of the day, you're going you're gonna to be most successful. Now – if I don't have all the best players, I got to do something. Where can I get players that can be? So you go to some two tight end, three tight end, four tight end. You go to this type of receiver. You have this type of quarterback. You Like you've described it, you have this quarterback scheme. We're going to run downhill. We got this. We're going to run outside zone with the RPO backside. You know, now both those guys right now can do both of that, but one guy has experience. So he needs to step up and do it. The other guy needs, probably needs to understand he is the bridge to this program. He needs to get us a bowl game. Now there's going game. There's probably going to be two games where the backup, and that's what happens in this league. Two games, the backup's going to have to carry us or, you know, lead us through there. If something's going to happen, you know. Always, yeah, always like, has, always happens that way. So, so that so so now we got a plan for that, you know. So it's exciting. It really is exciting, and and to see, uh, to see people, and, and hopefully they're learning, and they're learning more about uh, not only not only football, but just learning more about the NIL and how all this stuff is kind of working. And being aggressive. Yeah, and hopefully we're working to our strengths, whatever they are. You know, we 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 broadcast. We have the best city in the SEC. Yes, we do. So what's attractive to these kids? We need to figure out how can we build that partnership, and I know that's what they're doing. You know, how can and we so, how can we capitalize on that? Yeah, so it, it's it's a beautiful thing, uh, and I think the venue when they get it ready at Vandy, um, I think it's going to be really, really something exciting that we've needed since 1980. Man, no mm-hmm. stadium renovations since 1980. That's insane. Sit, sit on that for a minute. Sit on that for a minute. Since 1980. It's, it's 2024. It's 44 years. What is George? What have they done that George is in 44 years? Um, let's see. They've added a third deck. They've added, they've changed the scoreboard three or four times. They've built a recruiting pavilion. They've widened the concourses several times. Um, they've redone the suite several times. Um, they've replaced the hedges several times. They've replaced grass. They've redone the locker rooms. Any everything except knock down the stadium and rebuild it, basically. Okay, so you're a kid, and this is this is pre portal, pre nil, and mm-hmm. you're a kid, and you're a four star, creeping into five star, and you're. You give Vanderbilt at least a visit, right? Mm-hmm. And you go, and you're like, okay, wow, this is it. And then you go the next weekend to Georgia, and you get offers by both. Who are you going to get on the field first in the game? Probably for Vanderbilt. 
But in practice, this is another selling point, and this is where we got to get better at. And I think that quarterback room focused on this was we're going to compete every play, every every series, and we're going to try to get our offense. It's up to this room to get it going, you know. So I think it really it really gave them something to strive for. Yeah, and I think in recruiting, I mean, so what a blessing! What a blessing! Nineteen eighties when they re- redid stadiums. <laughs> That's brutal. You know, and we put a scoreboard in, you know, and now that end zone, you know, we've gone through uh, wooden bleachers. We've gone green, uh, just sitting area. We've gone where they've had campers, you know, we, we've done a lot of stuff. So, you know, just so glad they're getting, they're getting a plan together. They've so got it's complete overhaul. Gonna exciting. It's going to be yeah. exciting. And, and the thing all, Memorial Gym it, too. It all starts with the, with the, with the AD and the president, and then it trickles down, and we want to commend Clark Lee for just stepping up, man, and going. Maybe, maybe he was, you know, like you said, maybe he was overwhelmed. Maybe there were so many irons in the fire. Maybe there were, you know. I'll, I'll tell you what happened with Clark Lee is he 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 had the illusion that he was going to hire some guys and be the CEO, just kind of sit back and have the thirty thousand foot view, and then. In doing that, he realized that he got out of reach mm. and couldn't couldn't fix the things fast enough, and it all fell apart. Yeah. And so he realized that he had to come back down, cut, trim the fat, yeah, overhaul everything, and says, okay, I've got you guys here that I trust is going to run the offense, but I'm going to keep a close eye. I'm going to run the defense, get it back on track. And I'm going to be, he's like way more involved than he, than it seems like he's ever been. Oh, 100%. I, I, and I see, and I see that glimmer, that light, you know, you know how it is, Corey. I mean, you get excited when you call a game, you get excited about sports when you're podcasting, you get excited when you're uh, practicing you have that fire, you know, when you're, in, you know, instruction with te- with teacher as a teacher mode for all your students. Players gravitate to those people, and now when you hear Clark Lee talk, it's not like he's he's a he's an observer. He's a participant. Mm-hmm. He's committed, like committed to the defense, committed to the offense. And that's committed. not to say he wasn't before. It's just no, but different. It's, it's different, man. You can see it when he gets interviewed. It's like, you know, he's he's, it's, you know, he's. I, I think he's being more relatable to the players, uh, to the coaches. Uh, you know, just opening up. I think, and I think that's the thing. Maybe, you know, uh, maybe he's, I know. I know some coaches like David Cully have been there a couple of days when I've been on campus. I've seen them together. You know, you got to start, you got to lean on people and listen to people and, and then trust who you want to trust. And you don't always have to do it at that time, but you have to have something that, you know, you've got to get in alignment. And I think that's the beauty that we're doing. And I, I love the way you discover like, okay, this skill set, this is going to fit here. This makes a lot of sense. Wow. They went and got this guy too. So now they got two of these, you know, just like you talk about a safety coming in. You know, now we got two safeties. You know, we didn't have no, there was none of this discussion in the past. It was like, damn, I hope the whole portal, the whole team doesn't live, leave after spring break. I mean, you know, spring ball. <laughs> I mean, every year. Hope yeah. Well, I mean, right. And then sure enough, the best lineman, he leaves and goes where? Alabama. This ain't, we ain't making stuff up. No. That's what happened. They take the best player, he goes to Alabama. I mean, poor Georgia Tech, their best player, boom. You know, he's Detroit Lions now. So that that we get picked on some because, you know, we're 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 not at that level year in and year out. But the kids that we can go get can be very compatible comp- competing with those guys. And I think I think we can we'll we'll line up and Make a game of every every twelve all the twelve games. We should be competitive in all of them. I don't see us. I really don't. With the offense that we run, and the uncertainty that these the, a lot of these defenses they don't you know 
I mean, Auburn can say what they want. Yeah, they're ready for Alabama the next week. Yeah, they mailed this check in. They mailed the game in. But at the end of the day, they lined up and took the ball and them tight ends like you like like calling offenses too. They lined up and just pulled tight ends and hit them and the quarterback took off and the running back, they dominated the game. Mm-hmm. Two, one. All right, this episode is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. So, guys, I need you all to listen up for this huge announcement. I've been tracking the leaderboards every day, keeping my eye on all the scores, putting all my heart into it, and I'm super pumped to announce I am finally on top. That's right. Obviously, I'm talking about the hit mobile game Monopoly Go. You've probably heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times. It's a great mobile twist on classic Monopoly. You can play anywhere, anytime. You explore hundreds of Monopoly boards from Las Vegas to Camelot to the moon, all while raking in a huge fortune. So charge rent on iconic properties, just like classic Monopoly. So like Ventura Gardens, or no, Marvin Gardens. Uh, That's the one, Marvin Gardens. Huge, huge rent. You can charge your friend's rent on iconic properties, your iconic properties that you owned. Make sure you put those hotels there. Or you can go after their Monopoly money by pulling a bank heist and taking wrecking balls to their landmarks. So dirty. But my favorite part is the leaderboards where you can see who's a Monopoly tycoon and who's gone bankrupt. So get get yourself on the charts. Download Monopoly Go now, which is free on the App Store and Google Play. And that's the style of play that I think is, is Clark Lee. This is what he's been, I think this is what he's been looking for. You know, kind of like Bob Davies out of New Mexico State, he caught fire and then, you know, got away from it. But you got to have something, you know, when he was coaching, you know, back then. And so that uh, coach got in there and he put it in there and went and got those kids. We can get those same kids year in and year out at Vanderbilt. The Aggie Doors, baby. Aggie Doors. <laughs> I love Aggie that. Doors. Have you trade, um, trademarked that yet? I need to. <laughs> I need to. The Aggie Doors, man. The, yeah. the, Vandy, uh, the Vandy State Aggie Doors. Yeah. Well, let, I, I appreciate you letting me talk about all these guys because yeah, they're, they're near and dear to my heart, you know, because yeah. Vanderbilt and Nashville, and I think we got a great city, and mm-hmm. just you, know, you want to have a good product, and you, know, you want the Titans to do well. And yeah. You want the city to boom because yeah. there's NBA all involved. That's right. You want Nashville to boom, and Nashville is booming. Nashville's about to get an MLB team. Yes. Um, they're about to get WNBA. They're about to, um, you know, they're going to host a Super Bowl here pretty soon when the, the new, st- new stadium's open. Yes. Um, they're going to host a Final Four in that very same building, I bet. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're going to start hosting the SEC Championship, if I had to if I had to guess. I think right. things are going to start migrating from Atlanta mm. to Nashville. Mm. Yes. Nashville's a bigger tourist destination now and, and we and the hotel situation is really elite and mm-hmm. you know they you know they, they're going to build more and then they these got- high-rise condos open up airbnb opportunities i mean yes. there's all kind of things yes so yeah it's a, it's a booming city but um have you heard about these new rule changes by the way oh the two-minute drill the two-minute warning and then oh, the yeah. uh the head, the headset, the the, yeah. the quarterback comms. I love that. Yeah, they they tried it out in some of the spring games, um, and they're going to go with it now, and I like that. So well, now you're yeah. now you're going to see quarterbacks with the play sheet. Like, all right, let's go. Uh, you know, let's go um, dash right zipper thirty four cross check alert cover <laughs> two kill Dallas Cleveland. Yes. Yeah, you're well, gonna see a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna hear some of these mic'd up segments. It's gonna be hilarious. Like you're gonna see the. It's gonna be like the NFL where they had the belt pack, you know, and they they cover their face and they're like, okay, let's go. All right, yeah. all right, all right. Check it, check it, check it. Let's go. Uh, Nine sixty four Q zipper alert the D end kill <laughs> to ninety six Baltimore. Yes. And, uh, I don't know if those are actual play calls, but. Um, so, like, I love that now because it takes some of the signaling away from it. It takes some of the, you know, some of the cheating stuff, which, you know, stealing signals is gamesmanship until you do it with technology. Um, I think the third level to this rule change that they are so desperately and so drastically behind on 
is the sideline technology. Mm. NFL has surface pros. You see everyone from Tom Brady to whoever Desmond Ritter sitting on the sideline with their offensive coordinator on the iPad, on a Surface Pro. Mm -hmm. High schools have iPads, huddle sideline. Yes. College has... It's quite amazing. Um, and before before you go on that, too, I'll give you two things to uh, rift on. And I think a spring game should be against an FCS opponent. Well, uh, I, I, I'm, in, I'm in between on that right now. And this is why, because I think uh, we've got to figure out a way and I guess it's I guess it's just going to take care of itself. Is like if you do play a team like that, and a kid has a great scrimmage or game against the big team, and you see that already. I saw, uh, or or if he's a are, back, you, are you thinking you thinking like portal things? Yeah, like plucking that kid portal, up. Portal poaching. Yeah, but maybe yeah, they can do like that. the SEC. Maybe none of those kids can go to that school within a year, you know, or something like the SEC. They decided, like, after spring break, spring practice and spring break, no SEC guys can transfer back and forth. So maybe yeah. if you play somebody in the portal game, you have an agreement. Unless there's already pre uh, prior, you know, like. They have to jump in the portal prior to the game. And they yeah, can't play in the game. right. Can't play and ball out and then, oh, we want you to come down. You know, then now that's probably going to get that's probably going to get a lawsuit because now you are. If they're offering you money and you say you play, say South Alabama goes up and plays Vanderbilt, right? Mm -hmm. Say one of their kids scores five touchdowns and it's the first time he's gotten out there. And so Vanderbilt can offer him 20 grand a, a month to come to Nashville. He's gone, you know? So mm -hmm. South now is without what they, so, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's a, it's really opened up, but yes, that would have to come with more and tighter portal windows and restrictions and things. Yeah, for that. I mean, it's happening right now. These coaches. I mean, but then again, then again, Kurt, in the NFL, you can a guy can ball out in preseason game number two against you, and then sign with you two weeks later after yeah. after they get cut. Oh yeah, yeah. It, so it, it know. Uh, you know, and I, and I don't know the NFL game one hundred percent, so. I think I think what we could do and should do and probably are going to do is really see the good rules that make sense. Let's make sure we put those in place, and the ones that don't make so good sense, kind of leaving them out, whatever they are. I don't know what they are at this point, but I think that the fans need to understand that it's a whole new ball game. People don't really realize it's a whole. Like I, we talked to our kids at Mary G. Montgomery Monday about the opportunity for you to play college football is so limited coming out of high school in 2024 than it has ever been, ever, in history of football. you got major college teams not even offering high school guys or maybe only offering five or maybe offering ten. You know, where in the past, most teams would offer, would sign 25 or 30 every year. So they're not getting signed. So now the pool that goes to Division II, to NIA, to junior college, those that's where all those guys that are developing, that's where they're at. Yeah, they develop and then they just, they just move through the portal. Yes, yeah, so they've got to. So the portal now has to help them help. It's got to help everybody. So they got to figure out a way that, okay, I'm at Eastern Kentucky, but I've grown three inches now, and now I'm six six, six foot seven. I'm 260 pounds, and I'm going to try to gain 10 more pounds and be 280, 272, you know, and I'm ready to go to Vanderbilt, you know, after playing two seasons. Mm -hmm. So, and now you got three for two, you know, if you get, if you really have, if you load it up, now that's a way we can kind of back, backfill. Some good linemen, bringing mm -hmm. guys like that that we know he's farther along in his development process. 
See, so so now it doesn't matter where you're from. You got to look at these guys because we got we, we we were a pretty good football team. We were we were uh, one touchdown away from playing. I mean, we were semifinalists in the state in Alabama, 7A, lost to the state champion in 7A. That's the highest classification. Mm-hmm. We've got a number of players that were just not off. Like, we had a number of players that were just not offered by Power Fives or even Group of Fives or a lot of FCS didn't sign a whole lot of guys because they're waiting on guys to drop to them, you know? Right. So it's a whole, it's a whole, you know, and I'm in the middle of because of being a high school coach, but it's a, uh, you know, I'm fighting for the high school guys, but also what I what I do need to have all the high school parents understand and listen is wherever your son can go play college football, if that's his goal, you have to let him go play wherever it is. It was Campbellsville College. We got one going there from Mobile up in Kentucky. He's gonna go play, and the thing is, I talked to his family. I said, he needs to go up there and put some film together and make plays and get his 40 time down under 4-4, and he'll be a specimen. Mm -hmm. The next stop might be uh, Western Kentucky. The next stop might be uh, UT Martin. It might be Memphis. You know, find schools right around there, coach them up, send the huddle tape, uh, find out who recruits the Mobile area. And then you just reach out to the guy, DM him, and then or the lady. There's a lot of young ladies that are running recruiting offices now, you know, and say, "Hey, look, I'm I'm a ball player. I played at Mobile. Uh, I was a, a good player. We we had a good season, twelve and one, and build a relationship. You know, it's all marketing. It's all uh, nil. So that's oh, yeah. got to happen a lot with these guys. So it's it's a very um, it's action oriented, you know, oh, but yeah. we're so happy to the Commodores are are understanding what they have to do, when they have to do it, how they're going to go do it, and you know, now we can see what we're trying to work toward. Now we all now they that. just got to go execute. Yeah, they got to go execute and 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 believe in it. You know, yeah. that's the, that that um, that's the next step for Clark Lee. He's got to believe in it. And those kids got to believe in it. And then he's got to pull, he's got to pull stuff out of his hat somehow, you know? Oh yeah, for They're sure. Great to do that. You know, you oh, yeah. them. I've seen them. They, they, you know, your dad talked about your dad pre-show, you know, he ran, he called something, you know, that reverse and there, that's the ball game, you know? Yeah. Or the, that, his favorite play uh, was, his favorite play was 80 comeback, which was a uh, step, Token fake, dash, one on one, throw the ball low and away. Yeah. Okay. But you know, it's all Red about coach. And that that's the beauty. Now that's where Clark Lee, uh, that's where we're gonna really see his development this season. Cause now he's gonna the first, you know, you know, won some games, but a lot of teams were in dysfunction. Florida was dysfunctional, you know. Uh so so we won that game. And and I, uh, I'm thinking it was was it Arkansas, Some, someone else we beat at home, outstanding victory. So basically, and then last year, like I said, it just we never really got any continuity. We didn't know what we were doing. It seemed like we were trying to maybe do too much, and I'm not, I don't know. But it just seemed like things went sideways because we were trying to I don't know we we're trying to placate some people or whatever. Last I don't know it just went backwards. Uh, injuries, underperforming, over get coaches getting overwhelmed, all that good stuff. So, but it's an overhaul, new new attitude in, in the weight room, new attitude on defense, new attitude on offense, and the expectations are bowl game. Yes, it's bowl game time, and and I, I think I think it can happen because I think they there's there's a few teams going this way, trending this way. Vanderbilt's trending this way. I don't know how fast. Time will tell, but they're trending this way in some at some speed, and that's all. It's, the first thing that's important is going this way, and then changing your speed from there. So, but Kurt, man, I we're gonna wrap it up right there, man. Uh, Clark Lee needs to believe in his goals, and I think he is. Expectations are at an all time high. Um, and things are exciting around around the program, and it's it's going to be a 
it's going to be a fantastic ride uh, for the Vanderbilt Commodores in 2024. So, man, I thank you for joining me again. Um, you're definitely not going to be a stranger to the show. Uh, this won't be the last time we see you, hopefully. And um, but we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up right there. We're gonna send you guys off into the weekend. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Watch some Vandy baseball. Hope hope some more portal commits uh, pop up over the weekend. And uh, we'll see you back here next week on the Locked On Vandy podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. And as always, you already know the drill. Anchor down. Down. Down, baby. All right. Peace. Peace.